So now let's talk about SIBO. So how many of you have heard of SIBO? Okay, wonderful. So SIBO stands for small intestine bacterial overgrowth. So normally your small intestines or your small bowel does not have a lot of bacteria. Most of the bacteria are located in your colon or large intestine. You know, it was designed this way because your small intestines uh, job is really to absorb the nutrients from your diet. So, but patients who get SIBO basically have bad bacteria that have gotten into the small intestine. And so these bacteria cause a lot of gas, bloating, and abdominal pain. So why do people get SIBO? So risk factors for SIBO are like chronic constipation, if you're exposed to a lot of antibiotics, if you've been on acid suppressive medication for a long time, or if you've had intestinal surgeries. So patients with SIBO have really significant gas, bloating, and belching, and abdominal pain. I mean, these are patients who tell me they're bloated all the time. They wake up in the morning and they're bloated. They drink water and they're bloated. And it's because these bad bacteria in the small intestine are producing either hydrogen gas or methane gas or both. SIBO patients also suffer from systemic symptoms. So they suffer from fatigue, brain fog, joint pains. They can have changes in their bowel habits. And they can even suffer from malnutrition because the SIBO bacteria are using up all their nutrients. In fact, SIBO is classically associated with low B12 levels. So we're now recognizing that SIBO is an underlying root cause of IBS. SIBO was actually discovered by Dr. Mark Pimentel, gastroenterologist at Cedar sinai in 2006. So SIBO patients, they feel yucky and bloated all the time. They start becoming allergic to and more sensitive to foods in their diet. They can even become sensitive to histamines in the diet. So they feel very limited in what they can eat in order to avoid the bloating. So here's a SIBO case example. So Henry is a man who feels bloated all the time. He has struggled with constipation most of his life. He's been on antibiotics a few times in the last year, and he eats a standard American diet. He has diabetes. So how do we test Henry for SIBO? So the test to diagnose SIBO is called a lactulose breath test. So lactulose is a non-absorbable sugar. So your body cannot absorb it at all, but that leaves it in the gut. So if you have the SIBO bacteria there, they're gonna ferment that lactulose into either hydrogen or methane or both. So the test is designed this way. So first you collect a baseline breath, then you drink the lactulose, and then every 20 minutes you collect your breath. So a positive test will be a rise in hydrogen and methane production over the course of the three hours. The interesting thing is that the hydrogen predominant SIBO is associated with loose stools or IBSD, the diarrhea predominant IBS. And then the methane predominant SIBO is associated with constipation or IBSC, the constipation predominant IBS. So that's kind of a fascinating thing. So how do we treat SIBO? So it is a three-part approach. We have to kill the bacteria, starve the bacteria, and promote motility. So to kill the bacteria, we use uh, SIBO-specific antibiotics or herbal antimicrobials. The antibiotics we use are like rifaximin or neomycin, but more typically neomycin. Neomycin and rifaximin, they are kind of special in that they are 90%, they will only work in your gut. So that's the nice thing. It doesn't have quite the systemic side effects of a lot of standard antibiotics. So there was a publication that came out that showed that herbal antimicrobials are equally effective to antibiotics in treating SIBO. So I do also use herbal antimicrobials in my practice, and the ones I use are berberine and oregano oil. I'm seeing excellent outcomes, both with antibiotics and with herbal antimicrobials. So I always discuss both options with the patient and then we decide which would be best for them. So the second part of SIBO treatment is we need to starve the bacteria. So to starve the bacteria, we put the patient on a low FODMAP, low lectin diet. 
So FODMAP stands for fermentable oligodimonosaccharides and polyols. Fancy word, but basically <laughs> FODMAP foods are starchy things like breads and pastas. So we get rid of those things. And then lectins are basically the outer protective coating on whole grains and legumes that can be really hard on the gut, especially in IBS patients. So we'll have the patient avoid things like quinoa, beans, and certain seeded vegetables like cucumbers. So an easy way to think of this diet is it's basically a paleo diet. Um, we have them eliminate sugars, even fruit. We do allow these patients to have white basmati rice. White basmati is very easy on the gut and it has no lectins. And we also allow them to have yams. So the diet is a little tricky, so I have it completely outlined on a handout. So they just kind of follow that. So then the third part of the SIBO treatment is promote motility. So to do this, first step is no snacking between meals. And this is because you need four to five hours between meals to allow your small bowel to have a wave of con contractility to move things and sweep out the small bowel. So if you're constantly snacking on things, you don't get a chance for your small bowel to clean out. And then we want to make sure that the patient's having a good bowel movement every day. And so for this, we'll use magnesium citrate or we may use other natural things like aloe or something called Modal Pro. Modal Pro is made by pure encapsulations and it's a combination of ginger and 5-HTP. You know, ginger is a natural promotility agent on the gut and 5-HTP is the precursor to serotonin in the gut, so it also helps promote motility. Now the good news is this diet is not permanent. It's just for the course of treatment, so it's for about a month or a little bit longer, and then we will gradually introduce foods back into the diet. In rare cases when it's very, we're having trouble er, um, eradicating the SIBO, we do something called an el uh, elemental diet. So it's basically a liquid diet where you use a special formula that gives your body all the nutrients it needs, but it will 100% starve the SIBO bacteria. And this elemental diet is extremely effective at eradicating SIBO. So let's get back to Henry's case example. So he does the breath test and it shows that he has the methane predominant SIBO. And this makes sense because remember the methane one is associated with constipation and he's been struggling with constipation. So we treat Hendry with neomycin, 500 milligrams twice a day for two weeks along with the SIBO diet. And then I give him magnesium citrate, 500 milligrams every night at bedtime to help move his bowels. So like I said, I always talk to patients about the herbal antimicrobial options and the antibiotic options. But in Henry's case, we chose the antibiotics because he was already on berberine for his diabetes. So berberine happens to be amazing for blood sugar regulation. So he was already on it, so it made sense to try the antibiotics for him. So after four weeks, Henry comes to follow up and his bloating is gone. He's having a regular bowel movement every day and he's actually using less magnesium citrate, only 250 milligrams. His energy, his mental sharpness, his sleep have all improved. He's even lost five pounds and his fasting blood sugars look so much better as well. One of the amazing things we see is when we, when we get rid of SIBO, patients who were struggling with constipation all their lives, their bowel movements have now normalized. And the opposite is true. Those who are suffering from diarrhea all their lives, their bowel movements are now normal. So that's pretty amazing. Now SIBO is notorious for coming back, so that's a big issue. So I encourage my patients to continue to eat well. You don't want to go back to your old eating patterns. You really want to limit sugar and refined starches in the diet and avoid excessive snacking between meals. And we also want to make sure that these patients are having really good bowel movements every day to prevent the SIBO from coming back.